traffic jam. For the first time, Japanese researchers have conducted a real-life experiment that shows how some traffic jams appear for no apparent reason. They placed the 22 vehicles on a single track and asked the drivers to cruise around at a constant speed of 30 kilometers an hour. At first, traffic moved smoothly, but soon the distance between cars started to vary and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track but the jam spread backward around the track like a shockwave at a rate of about 20. At first, traffic moves smoothly, but soon the distance between cars started to vary and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track. But the jam spread backward around the track like a shockwave at a rate of about 20 kilometers an hour. Real life jams move backward at about the same speed. Carbon-rich soils. Rebuilding carbon-rich agriculture soils is the only real productive permanent solution to taking excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. She is frustrated that scientists and politicians don't see the same opportunities she sees. This year, Australia will emit just over 600 million tons of carbon. We can sequester 685 million tons of carbon by increasing soil carbon by half a percent on only 2% of the farms. If we increased it on all of the farms, we could sequester the whole world's emissions of carbon. Higher interest rates have knocked investors' confidence in putting their money into property, evidence suggests. The insurance company Standard Life says that the rate rises since last summer have led more people to question the wisdom of property investment. Obviously, this is all relevant to your final assignment, so we're going to talk about it. So until today, we've gone through face-to-face -face interviews as the main sort of part of interviewing the window. Today we're going to have a look at going to use an email and why they work, why they don't necessarily work, and what are the challenges and some of the things that we need to be understanding, you know when we are completing such interpreters. So let's start with the foreign one. Obviously, there are a few benefits to them and they are listed there upon that slide. It's obviously less stressful for those of you who might be a little bit anxious about interviewing. In this tutorial, we will show you how to find specific journal articles using the library catalog. The university subscribes to over 18,000 journals across a variety of subjects, most of which are available electronically to find a specific journal article using a library catalog. We need to search by the journal name as individual article titles are not listed in the catalog. Roosters greet the rising sun with But they also crow at other times. So are they responding to the light? Or do they simply know that it's morning? New research says the latter. Roosters crow because of internal time cues. The finding is in the journal Current Biology. Scientists controlled the light levels in rooster habitats. For two weeks, the birds experienced 12 hours of light followed by 12 hours of dim light. Consistent with the pre-dawn noises observed in wildfowl, the roosters began to crow about two hours before their rooms lit up. 
Then, for two weeks, the roosters lived in constant dim light, yet they continued to crow about once a day, at intervals of 23.7 hours, to be precise. Even without morning light, their circadian rhythms told them when dawn should be breaking. The birds also crowed in response to sudden light and to the sounds of other roosters, but they were more likely to react when those stimuli occurred near dawn, showing that you can't really keep a rooster in the dark about the time. When you don't clean your plate, microbes feast. And Americans are awfully good at feeding microbes, wasting some 222 million metric tons of food every year. That's a quarter of our food. Much of that wasted food ends up in garbage dumps, turned by microbes into methane, a powerful greenhouse gas and one of the primary culprits behind global warming. Now government officials in Massachusetts would like to ensure that restaurants, universities, hospitals, and other large institutions don't exacerbate that problem. The idea is to make sure all that wasted food doesn't end up in landfills, but instead becomes either compost or energy. The same microbes that turn food into methane in a landfill can turn food into methane in a biodigester, and that methane can then be used as a fuel. More importantly, from the Bay State's perspective, it will keep the state's landfills from filling up. Of course, the methane from landfills can also be harvested, and often is. And as the pilgrims knew, it would be even smarter not to waste the food in the first place. But let's give thanks for another helping of new ways to curb climate change. Our Milky Way galaxy has two large satellite galaxies orbiting it. They're known as the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds, and humans have been aware of the existence of these celestial objects for at least a millennium. Recently, researchers were curious about whether our configuration is fairly typical or an astronomical anomaly. In other words, is our corner of the cosmos ordinary? Now a new study finds that the Milky Way and its companion galaxies are an unusual combination, but they're not one of a kind. Astronomers in the UK and Australia looked at thousands of galaxies to try to find an analog of our arrangement. The search turned up two close replicas, each with a Milky Way-like galaxy, accompanied by two galaxies comparable to the Magellanic Clouds. But the researchers also concluded that such arrangements are pretty rare. Only half a percent of Milky Way-like galaxies have companions like ours. The Magellanic Clouds may be transitory features. In a few billion years, the Milky Way may absorb them completely. So someday, our corner of the cosmos could be pretty ordinary after all. You've probably heard of peanut or shellfish allergies, but a meat allergy? Not as common. Even weirder is what might be causing it. Tick bites, according to a study in the Journal of General Internal Medicine. A few years back, folks started showing up in emergency rooms in the southeast U.S. with hives, swelling, or worse, anaphylaxis, after eating red meat. For this study, researchers looked at three of those cases, and they found that tick bites, specifically those of the Lone Star tick, seemed to be the cause. The bitten victim's immune system appears to become sensitized to a substance called alpha-gal. And whereas all the major food allergies are triggered by proteins, the culprit here, alpha-gal, is a carbohydrate. Alpha-gal is found in the meat and fat of hoofed mammals, like cows, sheep, or pigs. So eating a burger can expose you to alpha-gal, which activates antibodies and leads to the release of histamines. Researchers say something similar to alpha-gal in the tick saliva may set off the immune system, which then goes after the alpha-gal in meat and leaves a steak lover ticked off.
often suffers choking air. But there's now one more thing proven to dissipate it, an Olympics. The 2008 Summer Games impelled those in charge of the Chinese capital to clear the air. Not only did they banish smog and smoke, they also inadvertently cut greenhouse gas emissions by as much as 96,000 metric tons during the Games. That's according to a new analysis published in Geophysical Research Letters on July 20th. The key was banning half of all the private cars in the city from driving on any particular day during the event. The findings suggest that individual choices, like whether to drive or take public transit to work, have major cumulative effects. London's so-called congestion charge for driving in town likewise cuts traffic and pollution. This year, London is bidding to have the most environmentally friendly Olympics ever. That includes building new stadiums atop former industrial sites and urging fans to choose public transit, walking, or cycling. But the British may not match the Chinese achievement, or even attempt to make the London Games carbon neutral. The Olympics that finally achieve zero carbon would really merit a gold for green. Meetings, calls, kids, dogs, errands, exercise, and all those emails. Who doesn't feel starved for time these days? But a new study suggests that you can feel like you have more time by donating some to others. The research is in the journal Psychological Science. There really are only 24 hours in a day, seven or eight of which are ideally spent sleeping. And a time commitment does take time. But researchers found that if people felt like they had done something for others, their perception was that they had gotten more done than the people who killed time, spent time on themselves, or got unexpected free time. And that made them feel like they had more time overall. You don't even have to spend your whole Sunday volunteering. The helping tasks in the study took only about 5 to 15 minutes. They included things like editing a student's essay or writing a note to a sick child. Time donators also felt like they could do more with their time, making them even more willing to give time in the future. 